Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, in previous class, we've been studying JavaScript's functions. Today, basically, we will be using JavaScript's functions with external JavaScript and using JavaScript and HTML forms. Okay, so we will see how you can read the data from an HTML form, process it in a JavaScript function, and display the output. My name is Dr. Shan Bhatti. If you're here for the first time, kindly don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you receive the tutorials and notifications regularly. Let's begin. Now, um, we have a simple HTML file created and this is uh, a simple HTML data. I think if we come back here, we will see a simple JavaScript file HTML available. Okay, so if I just scroll it on this side, so we can receive. Uh, if I come back here, I think what happened? Here we go. And this can be uh, voila. Let me just position this HTML window. Here we go. So now what we need to do is we need to first of all um, include an external JavaScript file inside my HTML, and then I will put the remaining code inside my. Uh, body okay so in order to write an external javascript uh, what we need to do is we need to create a new file okay so in this new file basically we write a simple javascript function data for example uh, we can say function uh, function name can be uh, display and bracket star bracket close and we come back here okay in this case uh, we will just simply write uh, for now let's just not write anything okay let me just we have just created a function it's always recommended that whenever you use an external javascript use in form of functions put the function data inside external javascript if you are just using document dot uh, or document dot write do not use external js use try to use uh, that such kind of code within your internal html however uh, external js because external js behaves like an external file you put the code here and then you link it with your original html so you have two files now so in that case it's much easier and convenient if you use functions because you can call a function from another file okay so what we do is we created a function here press control s and when we do press control s we need to save this file so if i say go back into my folder and very quickly uh, where i've been saving my files here i will save this file as uh, my uh, js code okay dot js now dot js is basically extension for javascript file so whenever you want to save your external file at javascript you need to save it in .js, CSS, .css, HTML, .html, JavaScript, .js. Just simple as that. So we save this file in .js format, and this file now only contains your basic JavaScript function. Okay. So this file only contains your basic JavaScript function, nothing else. Okay. So it's just a simple JavaScript code. Then what we do is we go back into our HTML, and so now within our HTML, what we need to write to it is we need to write the same script tag. We specify the script tag and within the script tag, we need to specify the type. For example, this is supposed to be text slash JavaScript. Okay. And then we specify something called SRC. So the basic structure is same. We specify script tag, we give it the type, but this time we added a source that this script source is not internal, it's external. And that script source is, for example, my JavaScript from class. So I will just write my JS code and press enter. Okay, backslash and enter slash. That's it. So this is a script start and end tag. Within this, we have specified that I'm using an additional uh, JavaScript file and extra external file. So all my code is basically in that particular file. Now I come back into my HTML body. Within the head tag, I have a basic simple tag. So I can say, uh, in this case, uh, h2 um, HTML form. Okay, and then sorry, HTML form. Okay. I've come back here and let me create a simple HTML form. So in this case, I will create FOM form. Now uh, we have been talking very little about forms. Let's start talking about the form. Form basically is HTML tag that starts to create uh, your form elements. You or in other words, your GUI elements in your page. Okay. So whenever we need HTML uh, text fields, buttons, uh, radio buttons, menu icons, where user basically enters the data and we process it, we need to create something called form. Form is specifically, uh, you can create many forms and form specifically behaves in a way that it reads your single form data, it processes and then you can, pro, uh, you know, control where the data is sent. Okay. In other words, the data is being processed by JavaScript or the data is sent to the server. We use this form to process that. That's why 
we need to specify the form tag first. Within the form tag, we specify the form elements. I will show you. So first of all, we give it the name. What is the name of my form? So I can simply say my form. Okay. And there are various other methods that we use. For example, there's method, there is action, but we will not talk about those four methods right now. For now, I've just specified a simple form that has a name. Again, name is your name of your form. Remember, you can create more than one forms in your HTML. That's why naming each form will make it convenient for us to process the form data as we go along. Okay, so your HTML can have two, three different forms. So we can identify which form or data we are working on whenever we process the data. Okay. So if we create a form, now it's Java uh, HTML knows that you are basically working on a particular form. The next thing we do is we insert the element. So we start with an input tag. Now input tag basically means uh, it's an HTML tag that contains various different types of inputs. So we specify type equals and you can see that the list pops up. Button, checkbox, color, packet, date, picker, uh, date and time, date, email, clients, hidden image. All these are basically uh, what we refer to as input types. Okay. You can insert them uh, from the reset button to radio button to password field to number field. So if you enter a number field automatically, you can only enter a number field. You will no longer be able to enter a text, uh, an alphabetical text inside of it. So if, for example, for a phone number or for your uh, numerical password or something that only requires numbers in terms of credit card number or uh, your age, in other words, we can use a number and we don't have to worry that any invalid data would be entered there. In our case, I will simply use text, okay? Because this is an input and we can use many inputs. So your uh, form can have many input, name, your father name, your surname, your address. It will have many elements. So we, what we do is in order to identify which input text field we are using, we have to give it something called again name, okay? So what is the name of this thing? So I can say, for example, um, dummy, let me just use it, okay, for now. And we have a dummy text, uh, dummy text field available. Similarly, I will use something called input again. Again, I use a type. This time I will use it button. Okay, B-U-T-T-O-N button, B-U-T-T-O-N button. Now, button is again another HTML tag that we used previously as well. We can use a button directly, but that button that technically doesn't belong to a form. Here, this button belongs to a form. So what happens is that when you click on a button, you can control that the entire form data in a one click is sent to a server. Okay, or the entire data is processed by JavaScript. So uh, if you place a button inside a form using an input tag, you can control what happens to the remaining data inside that form. So it's, it's more useful and more prone and more professionally used uh, within forms data. So here we specified the button. And again, this button, we can specify the name. You can have multiple buttons in one. So for example, button OK, in other words, OK. And then uh, obviously for this button, we need to provide something called on click event. We have been using this previously as well. And I close it, okay, and in value as well. A value, and this can be uh, C L I C K click, okay, okay. So now value basically means the text that appears on the button. On click means what should happen when user clicks on this button. Currently, I have not specified anything, but what we need to do is we need to specify this method. So we created a method inside our JavaScript called display. So I can come back here and I can say D I E S P L A R display, and bracket star bracket close. Now what happened here is we created a simple form. If I press S, you should see an HTML form on your output window on your browser. If I just scroll it down a little bit even more. So you have a text field available. You can enter the data here and we have a button available here, uh, which I can create. Okay. Uh, see this? Uh, it appears as a box with OK, but there is no clickable event. I think I can edit this. So this again become text field. So if I come back into my code as Mrs. Spelter, it's B-O, not B-O, B-U-T-T-O. -T -T so if I save it, now we get a button back. I can enter some data and when I click on it, it would go into this JavaScript file and execute this method here. So let's do one thing. Let's go into this code. We write window.alert and I can say hello form, control S. Okay. So when I go back into my JavaScript and HTML, let me save this. So we have called the display method. Again, we have talked about this on click basically means it's an event. When this event is triggered, a certain action should be performed. What action is we have called this display method that when user clicks on on click, a display method should be executed. Now, in this case, we have not specified the script tag because display is a JavaScript code. What we have done here is we just uh, use the method name. What happens is that the script code or the script tags are basically implicitly added in your on click event. You don't need to specify them. Automatically, if you add a function here, 
the HTML and browser would understand that ah oh, you are calling JavaScript. So you need you don't need to use the script tag. Okay, so it's it's implicitly added. So that's why we've called this method. So when it this method is called, it will go and try to find where's JavaScript, and then it says, oh okay, we have a script tag, and we have imported a JavaScript or attached or linked this additional JavaScript file. So the code actually is not in this file; it's actually an external file. Okay, and in this file we have the simple JavaScript functions available. Now what we do is we come back here, we press S. If I come back here, if I enter some tag, click OK, we have this page says hello form available. As simple as that. Again, we create an HTML form, we click a button. On this button, we created an event called display. As soon as I click on this button, an event occurs. That event triggers this JavaScript code or this JavaScript function. This function has a code called window dot alert. And it processes that. Simple as that. So you can use external JavaScript functions in an external JavaScript file. Embed that file in your HTML code. Usually we do that in a head tag, so that as soon as your HTML loads, the first thing is head tag, and the head tag automatically loads your JavaScript file. So once you use it, you would be sure that this file is already incorporated in your HTML file or already embedded in your HTML file. Now, because we have created a form, the idea is that we enter some data on the form. And that data is basically processed. So how do we read the data from our HTML file? So we go back into our JavaScript. Here, what we need to do is, for example, I create a local variable called variable uh, data. Let's just use it. Our data is equals to. And then, in order to read the form data, we need to go into document, an HTML document. Again, we have been talking about it. Document represents your web page. So on my web page, we in we have need there's a form. So on this web page, in order to access it, we use something called document. Okay, so document my web page document dot forms. Okay, why forms? Because we have used the forms data. Okay, so this is the form. We have used this form to access the data. So I come back here and in document I use dot forms. Previously we used document dot write ln. This time we are using document dot forms. That on your document there is something called forms. Use that form. And now this form basically behaves like an array. So we give it an array sign because a form contains many. Elements inside it. A form can contain many text fields, many buttons, many radio buttons, many checklists, many text area. So it behaves like an array. So the data inside a form uh, internally is handled like an array. So each element that we insert on a form is an array element. So what we do is we give it an array symbol brackets, inverted quotations, and the name of that array. So in our case, we have given it uh, for what was the name if I remember correctly, uh, my form. Okay. So this is my form. So I come back here and I say go inside my form. Okay. Um, again, uh, this is the name of the form. The first thing. Why the name of the form? Because again, we said that there can be many forms inside your HTML. Okay. So you can have many forms. So there can be two, three forms in your HTML, and you can process the data separately for each form. So in this case, we have specified that go and document there is something called form. Which form? My form. Read the my form data. Inside my form data, there is an additional element called whatever the element is. So inside this form, okay, HTML. Go inside HTML, find a form. Oh, we have a form form. But which form? There can be many forms. So you find my form, a form that has name called my form. So we said okay. Then inside my form, again, if you break up the hierarchy, we have something called inputs. So which input you are talking about? There can be many fields. So in this case, this is called uh, what was the name of this input? Dummy. Okay. So I come here. And I said use dummy, d u m y dummy. Okay. So now what we are trying to do is we are trying to tell this thing. Uh, if I let me close this, we are trying to tell this thing that go inside your document. Inside document there is something called form. The name of the form is my form. Inside the form there is a field called dummy. Read that dummy. What should you do? You take that dummy and then you read its value. Okay. So now what it will do? It will read the value of that dummy text field, which resides inside my form, which is a type of form inside your HTML document. Hopefully, the hierarchy is clearly explained. So uh, you simply use this code to access the data in a text field in your form. Then what we do is we can say uh, form hello form data and colon space and then plus and I can simply print the data here. Okay. So what we do now here is we print the data. So whatever data was there, we, we fetched the data, we saved it inside a variable called data, okay, and then we printed this information on an alert window. Or we can do whatever we want with that data. Press Control S. We go back into this. We press Control S. 
we have this data available so in this case what's happening uh, okay H E double -L, L O hello or will let me in fact write my name here okay and if I click okay so you can see hello form data Zishan. so whatever data I entered here is now being displayed on my pop-up window now this is basically we have used a simple form that reads the data using JavaScript and then we processed it or we put up displayed that data now if you understand this concept it's a very simple thing we created a form having a form name input types on click event executed a method a function this function is a JavaScript function that we saved in an external file in this file we just created function file display data we use this method similarly you can create many other uh, methods and functions that can do lots of processing on the data similarly we can process the data we can validate the data for example if I want to do a validation whether this data is uh, email address or not or for example whether this data is empty or not or we can do that as well so for example we came here we write this data uh, in, in fact let's write if condition okay if uh, we have not talked about it I will talk about it in the next class but just for a simple sake if data is equal to blank what should you do okay um, hang on. so we write a simple if condition now if condition basically validates a condition statement what should happen in certain scenarios okay so if the data is blank meaning that if there is no data available okay and this is called equals to operator it will evaluate a relation between that if the data is equals to nothing there is no data blank what if I don't enter anything here so if I don't enter here click on this thing see this there's no output here but before I click it I should be informed by the system okay or there should be a message that there is no data available so what I can do is if the data is blank is equal to do I can generate an alert uh, window dot alert and I can say uh, sorry uh, please enter name in field okay so for example if I don't enter anything and I click okay and this is blank so I just simply check it that enter uh, if this is blank please enter the name in your field press enter and then I can do is return and FLSC false okay what this should do is it should stop the next line being executed it will return the value right from here and from this point the code will go back to our return method hopefully this line will not be executed so if I press s go back into my code press s come back here okay I'm sorry and then if I don't enter anything here and click ok please enter a name in the field if I click ok there you go now the next field was not executed and I only got an error message please enter the name in the field and once I enter my name again okay and press ok this time hello from the Sean data so we did a simple form validation as well to validate whether there is a data inside this or not okay what we did here was a simple condition then alert message then a return value a return means that if this condition becomes true if there is actually no data display this message first that please enter your name data then do nothing go back to your original value do not go and proceed further okay so this is the further procedure do not proceed this data return from this point forward so as soon as this is executed the condition becomes true this message is displayed and then return back to home do not go further because there is no point because there is no data since there is no data and there is no point going further we stop the execution of this function method by returning and then false again is a boolean variable so we just we need to give a dummy data okay sometimes we just give it zero or sometimes we just give it false uh, so that there's just a simple dummy data that's been sent and uh, it's basically interpreted as none value okay um, false value so what happens here is that once it reaches here display is displayed and method executes and we did a simple firm validation okay so if there is no uh, method available or no data available we can even validate that so uh, hopefully you understand this principle we used forms here we used uh, uh, functions and external javascript along with simple validation as well okay my name is dr shanbadi if there's any confusion or problem don't forget to leave the comments below and i will try to help you out thank you very much